Good evening. Welcome to Candlelight Carols. This is the first Candlelight Carol since 2019, I think. And it might be 2018. So please watch as you are moving about the building. There are some steps across the way. The service will proceed unannounced. If you're doing a reading or a prayer, your name does appear on the screen. It would help logistically if you are doing a reading, if you're on this side of the church. Because we would like you to use this lectern. But Lynn, who's doing one of the opening prayers, and Elspeth, who's doing the, the commentary, can use the other side. That will that'll make sense once it happens. There's tea, coffee, some mulled wine, and copious amounts of mince pies. Is that the right word to use? So there's an abundance of mince pies through in the kitchen, heating through. So please do stay. And the lights all go on for you to go through to the hall, don't worry. Um, so please do stay behind for some Christmas fellowship and chat through in the hall. Anything else? I feel like I'm doing my air, aircraft attendant kind of thing. Don't think I need to tell the fire exits are, but they're at the top of each aisle, <laughs> should you need to. Maybe that's an appropriate thing to say when there's lit candles on the go. Um, but anyway, enough for me. Helen is going to come forward and read the words in white, and we're going to join in the words in yellow, and um, the hymns will proceed unannounced. Call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who sit in the land of darkness, and then the light shines. Come, let us worship the God.
in this season of waiting, of longing, of looking for you to come into our world, we are seeking light. In our own lives, we are seeking light. In our neighbourhoods, we are seeking light. In our families, we are seeking light. In our work, we are seeking light. In grace, we are seeking light. In our nation, we are seeking light. In our world, we are seeking light. In our church, we are seeking light. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and it will be given to you. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. May we have eyes to see you and ears to hear you. Come into our world. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. Now the snake was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the snake, We may eat through fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will certainly not, you will not certainly die, the snake said to the woman. 
For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And he hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman put you here with me. She gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? Amen. Now, this is the prologue to a Christmas commentary. What is this that we have done? Answer Eve for everyone, whether this is history or a storyteller's mystery. No one in this pleasant place, however fair or full of grace, can yet deny our common suit. We have all eaten of this fruit. Each ancient pathway we have trod as serpent, woman, man or God, tempted, deceived, apportioned blame and hidden from ourselves in shame. Once we were so rich in trust, but traded this for pride or lust. Into greed or sloth we wandered. How a whole world's wealth is squandered. What's to be done? What treasury can raise us from this poverty? Peace be to all. Be not perplexed. Attend and see what happens next.
would have been remiss of me not to welcome Fiona and her mum Marjorie tonight. It's lovely to have you both back. And we look forward to your two choices to what is pondering what we've sung and what we've read and what we've heard as we listen to you. seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. Six. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. What kind of Messiah? What kind of Messiah does anyone want? What sort of Saviour will do? Before we subscribe to get dumped in the font, what kind of messiah are you? What kind of messiah does anyone need? In our postmodern hullabaloo? 
What qualifications will you help him succeed? What kind of Messiah are you? Will you stop us from worry and cow us from fear? Will you free us from debt and fatigue? Will you send Rishi Sunak packing next year? Will you put us on top of the league? Will you heal our diseases with mystical magic so we'll live to 102? Will you make it all better when things turn out tragic? What kind of messiah are you? Will you find me a partner and get me a job? Will you save me a good place to park? Will I be super fit even though I'm a slob? Will you keep me a berth in the ark? Will you answer my prayers, not everyone else's? Will you make all my wishes come true? What kind of messiah are you? Will you be kind to Hindus and good atheists? Will you send all the bad ones to hell? Will you show Richard Dawkins he doesn't exist? What is it you're planning to do? Do tell. Will you stop every war, every flood and tsunami and remove the excess CO2? Will you fix all the people who are driving me bombing? What kind of messiah are you? Will you make sure my mortgage rate doesn't go higher? Stop me drinking too much alcohol? Can I win Euro millions and go and retire to a house on the Costa del Sol? Will you bless my belief and ignore my behaviour and vindicate all that I do? Oh, just be my own private and personal saviour. What kind of messiah are you?
is taken from the book of Luke, and it's Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee in Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Amen. night and day, dancing into DNA, dancing to a different drum, dancing into kingdom come, dancing with a virgin stranger, dancing in the dirty manger, dancing ever undefiled, dancing as a little child.
Luke chapter 2, reading verses 8 to 20 from the NIV. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. Modus operandi. Shepherds, they say, were the fools of their day, the ones who were the butts of the jokes. Fred Flintstone was sheep, Homer Simpson asleep, and perfectly ordinary blokes. They're nobody famous, just some ignoramuses, anyone might string along. Neither pious nor holy, they take things in slowly and often get much of it wrong. So they're out in the town looking over the town, feeling vaguely that life's passed them by, just minding their own and probably having a moan when an angel gate crashes their sky. For that's how it is, this behaviour of his. It's his modus operandi. He will choose the obscure or the dull or the poor. Frankly, anyone who's handy.
Let us hear the word of God, as found in Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you that Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realised that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi, then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. Amen. The Fourth King's Gift Three kings, of whom we often read, brought him gifts he didn't need. Gold for a prince of paradise, whose grace and favour know no price. Frankincense to raise a prayer to God when God's already there. Man, to keep the flies away from one whose flesh would not decay. And so it was another king who brought the useful offering of homage to the baby Christ. The blood of children sacrificed. Rachel and Rama still laments the murder of her innocence. And will not be consoled nor see a heavenly conspiracy. Evil is evil yet. And yet her desolation will beget compassion, strong and bittersweet. Hate sows seeds of its own defeat. Herod's slaughter turns again. Relentless mills of human pain that fuel the generator of the power of transforming love. Nothing will remedy her loss, yet the despair of Friday's cross will bring with Sunday's dawning rays outpourings of amazing grace.
This reading is from Philippians chapter 2, again reading from the New International Version. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Do everything without grumbling. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Amen. Every walk to a Christmas commentary. Our story told, the mystery remains. God's hiding everywhere. This is the way the love that made the universe sustains the broken Eden of our every day. There's nothing to pay back, nothing to earn, nothing we need to do. Yet it may be a lifelong enterprise for us to learn the secret power of humility.
Let us pray. Glorious are you, mystery of life, essence of all creation. You are the symphony of the stars and planets. You are the music of the atoms within us. You are the dawn of the mountain peaks, the moonlight on the evening seas. Forest and farm, the rush of the city, everything is embraced in your love. We rejoice as we sing our gratitude. Glorious are you, O Jesus Christ, cosmic love in human flesh. You grace the smallness of time and place to teach us to dance to the music. You walk in our seas and heal in our streets. You make your home in our lives, revealing that cross and resurrection are one on the road to freedom. We rejoice as we sing our gratitude. Glorious are you, O Spirit of Truth, wisdom and breath of our being. You are the wind that sweeps our senses. You are the fire that burns in our heart. You are the needle of our inner compass, always pointing to true north, guiding us on our sacred dance into the mystery of life. We rejoice as we sing our gratitude. Amen.
stand. We'll all say together a Christmas affirmation of our faith. We say together, we believe in God, the creator and giver of life, who brought all creation to birth, who mothers us and fathers us, protecting, nurturing and cherishing us. We believe in Jesus Christ, God born among us as a fragile baby, embodying both love and the need for love, and calling us to rest in God as trustingly as a tiny child. We believe in the Holy Spirit, breathed into us at our birth, always drawing us on to be born again, encouraging, exhorting, comforting, nourishing our growth, and inspiring our living. We believe in the reconciliation of the world to God through Christ, hunted at birth and humiliated at death. Christ entered our faithful darkness so that we might enter his glorious light and share the life of his resurrection. And we believe that each new child is a glimpse of the face of God, a sign of the life to come, and a call to live in peace and celebrate living together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Amen. Please stay standing for our last carol. <laughs> 